Good morning, everyone. So it is almost 2022 at the time of this video. And so I thought that I really should do a pens collected in 2021 before it's over. Of course, I think this video will probably not post until 2022, so Happy New Year! So 2021, as far as pen acquisition goes, was a bit slow. I received three found, three found pens, six fountain pens in 2021, three of which were vintage and three of which were modern, and three and a half of which were actually gifted. So yeah, I didn't buy a whole lot of pens. Kind of crazy. So I have made a collection video in the past. I'll post a link down below to that. And basically this is just an addition to that. It's quite cold in the house. I have some coffee here to get me going because it's still kind of early in the morning. I've been up for several hours though since before the sun came up. All right, so we're going to do this in chronological order. The very first pen that I received in 2021 was this beautiful limited edition red Pelican M600. So this was actually ordered in 2020 and it was kind of a half gift from my partner. We went, uh, we split the cost of it and it didn't arrive until I think February of 2021. So it took a little while to come home, but it is how I kicked off the new year and what a beautiful pen this is. It's actually, it's really stunning. It's really stunning. So this pen was ordered through thenibsmith.com and the owner of the store, Dan, he actually does custom grinds as well if you order them during checkout. And so I ordered this with a cursive italic grind. This pen was probably inked up for maybe six or seven months out of the whole year. So it was definitely one of the more used pens this year. Next was another Pelican. This was on sale at thenibsmith.com. This is the 400 or M405, which means the five means that it's the rhodium trim instead of the gold trim. And as you can see, it's a little bit smaller than the M600. So this is the petitest pen in this line. And this one, again, I had custom grind, but I don't enjoy it as much. So <laughs> the thing with the grinds is they generally take off all the tipping material. With an ita italic nib, which is a very square grind, I don't mind that at all. I like the slicey, like knife-like experience. Whereas this one is an extra, extra fine with no tipping material. And so, Maybe you can imagine what that might be like. Although it is smoother than I would have expected, it still is a little bit more scratchy than I would like it to be. And Bean is getting into trouble, <laughs> making a bunch of noise. Um, but this one is a really beautiful pen and I do love the rhodium trim. It's kind of like, I don't know, it reminds me of diamonds. It's, it's flashy and sparkly and the nib oh, just catches the light in a really lovely way. I wish that the extra fine on a Pelican was small enough for my writing because it's not and that's a bummer because I love these pens so much uh, but I think ultimately if I get any more Pelicans in the future I'll have to go with the italic peep, 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 nibs. So. Alright, next up 
was this beautiful Schaefer oversized balance pen. This has been years of searching. So my very first fountain pen, I don't remember what year it was, was a Schaefer oversized balance pen in Ebonite. And it broke in half and I had it repa repaired and then it broke in half again and I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna retire this pen. I still have it in my collection, but I just stopped trying to use it and I stopped trying to fix it. Uh, because it just didn't seem to hold. So since that, which that pen in particular was one of my absolute favorite pens, and I used it all the time, there was like this void <laughs> in my collection, and I really wanted to have another Schaefer oversized balance pen, but I felt it was, I don't know, kind of hard to find a replacement. And I think because I had such high expectations and such a history with the other one that all the, the oversized balance pens that came and went on different websites like eBay and Etsy even and Peyton Street Pens and VintagePens.com, uh, there was a lot of oversized balance pens, but none of them quite did it for me until this one came along. And this one I found on Peyton Street Peyton Street Pens, and it is a celluloid with the jade green marbling, and it's just oh, it's so beautiful. And the nib is perfect, and it writes so well, and it looks so good, and it feels so good, and it was just one of those, I am so glad to have this pen in my life again. Everything feels complete. I don't have to search anymore for this pen, so I feel very lucky. Then, in the middle of the year, one of my absolute favorite pens, the Caveco Brass Sport, was actually stolen. And that was a pen that I think I got in 2018 or 2019, and I can't quite remember, but it was my security blanket pen. It was the pen that I took everywhere with me. I didn't always write with it, but it was always in my backpack or my purse or with me somewhere. I never left home without it. And I just, I love the weight of it. I love the feel of it. I love how tough it is. I can just throw it in a bag and not have to worry and it just, yeah, it's one of those pens. So it was stolen from our campsite. I left it behind because it had been leaking and we went out on a hike and we came back and it was gone. And that was that. And it was really sad. And uh, I, oddly enough, I didn't rush out and find a replacement. I actually felt kind of hesitant about doing that. I don't know, something was holding me back from doing that. And I am glad I waited because for Christmas, my partner Brian gifted me this pen and it just feels just as wonderful as the first one, if not more. I think that was part of my hesitation is I worried that it was that particular pen that I really loved and any replacement pen, even if it was the identical pen, wouldn't feel the same and I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't want to write with it, but turns out it's just every bit as amazing as the first one. So the last two pens that I received this year were both Christmas presents. So actually the last three pens that I've received this year have been Christmas presents. These two were from my mom and stepdad. And oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> they are so magnificent. Holy cow. Uh, so this one is a wall signature pen. It has a signature nib.
It's a beautiful coral celluloid and it has a flexible nib and the tulip clip. It's a junior size, so it's it's quite tiny. In fact, it's not that much taller than the Quebeco Brass Sport. And it's just probably the most beautiful wall pen I now have. <laughs> and I love wall pens. I have a lot of them, particularly the tulip clips. It's my favorite design. And actually one of them was my second first, second first fountain pen? That doesn't make any sense. My second vintage fountain pen ever. <laughs> and I love the heck out of that pen. I actually need to restore it. The bladder has dried up and I need to replace that. I just haven't gotten around to it. But this one is just, oh, it's magnificent. Yeah, really, really a big fan. And then this one, is a Parker dual fold, and this is the Senior, which is the largest of the fountain pens, or the dual fold lines, I mean. This is a celluloid jade green, and a really beautiful example actually of this particular celluloid a lot of them i feel like have a lot of discoloration and this one looks i can only imagine but it looks pretty pretty new and i wonder what this green must have looked like when it first was was made but maybe not so different this pen is a hundred years old and that's amazing and so is this pen actually and so is my Schaefer. They're just, they're just amazing to me. So this one has a stub nib, which is really fun. And uh, it's funny because this pen, I haven't gotten to know this pen very much yet because I've only received it just a couple days ago. Feels massive to me, but it's not, it's not any bigger than the Schaefer Oversize. And I think that's because I am so accustomed to the the dual fold junior size. I really love that size. Um, that the seniors just feel gigantic. You can't go in there right now. Why not? It's pretty. So that is it. Those are the pens that I received in 2021. I have no plans for 2022. There are some pens on my wish list, but I don't know if they'll ever come to be. But two of them are really expensive. <laughs> well, the, the two that are on my list, they're the only two that are on my list. One is a Namiki, uh, a Pilot Namiki with the, um, I forget what the design was, but it's like pine needles and pine cones. And it's beautiful and I would love to have one. <laughs> the other one is a Nakaya. I would love to have some sort of I, Nakaya Piccolo. Um, I don't know if those will ever happen, if they're just going to be like a pipe dream sort of pen, but maybe one day I will save up my pennies and purchase those too. But they'll be big purchases, so we'll see. I did receive one other pen this year. It was a Santini Ebonite beautiful beautiful material a really beautiful pen but it just didn't do it for me so i actually sold that one very quickly after bringing it home so it didn't last very long um, and that's it so happy new year and may all of your fountain pen dreams come true